Let's begin with what you like. Money. I love money also, but this one is not my money. It's our money, which was stolen. Nigeria has signed a tripartite agreement for the repatriation of over 318.4 million US dollars. You heard right. That's over 115.9 billion Nigerian naira with the United States of America and the island of Jersey. A statement from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs says the pact was signed on February the 3rd at the United States Department of State in Washington, D.C. According to the statement, the funds which were looted by former dictator Janestani Abacher are, uh, are to be used to fund three major projects, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the Abuja Kano Expressway, and the Second Niger Bridge. The Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Abubakar Malami, signed the agreement on behalf of the federal government. The Assistant Solicitor General of the Island of Jersey signed on behalf of the island via Deputy Assistant Attorney General in the United States Department of Justice on behalf of the American government. Members of the Nigerian delegation who witnessed the signing include a Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Oyema, and a Nigerian ambassador to the United States. The Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Abubakar Malami, joins us via telephone now from the United States to give us an insight on how far the, uh, the government has gone, are we done and dusted in getting that money, that loot back home? Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for joining us tonight on Politics Today on Channel's television. Give us a sense on how far you and your team have gone. Is everything all signed and sealed? All right, I uh, would we'll connect with him. I understand our engineers, engineers are working on getting to talk to him. So in the meantime, one of the other issues we'll be talking tonight is about security. It was a long day indeed today at the National Assembly. It took over four hours of meeting behind closed doors before the Senate ended its session with the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Mohamed Adamu. After the session, Mr. Adamu told National Assembly correspondents that he briefed the lawmakers on the modalities for community policing. Take a listen to him. I have explained the concept of community policing to the Senate, which involves partnership with communities, and there are various communities. You can have traditional uh, institutions as a community, you can have a national union of road transfer workers as community, you can have the media as a community, and various uh, forms of community that we need partnership. And when we talk about the partnership, we are taking a problem solving. We need to solve problems that evolve in the community. Well, the Senate President, Hamel Lawan, who presided over the executive session, says the lawmakers have resolved to support the police through legislative action. Well, last week, the Senate summoned Mr. Adam to brief lawmakers on the state of insecurity in the country. Meanwhile, on the lower chamber of the National Assembly, the Speaker of the House, Honorable Femga Jabi Amila, and the Joint House Committee on Defense, Army, Navy, and the Air Force also met with the service chiefs today. The meeting is coming one week after both chambers of the National Assembly dedicated a whole day to debate the issue of insecurity in the country, with the lawmakers calling for the resignation of the service chiefs. According to the Speaker, security is a priority of the Ninth House of Representatives and will be addressed frontally. Take a listen, take a listen to him. in ways that you can only find in almost a, uh, a country without, without, uh, without security forces. But we know, we know that you guys are doing a lot. This is our priority. It, it, it's, it's the government's priority, and it should also be our priority in, um, in, um, in the House. It's major in our legislative agenda. And we must address it frontally, squarely, and however and whatever needs to be done. We must think outside the box. We must take the battle to these criminals, whatever they are. Uh, so this is actually another one of those meetings, engagements, which we say is going to be continuous. We said it the last time. It's going to be continuous to, to, to find out exactly, open up, find out exactly what is going on, what the issues are, what the problems are. Uh, and hopefully, you know, get some commitments from you. 
Well, let's get back to our first issue. My panel on this matter are ready, but let's hear from the Attorney General who is representing the federal government of Nigeria in the United States with the island of Jersey and the United States government on returning those monies back to Nigeria. Thank you so much, Attorney General. If you can hear me now, uh, I understand that we lost contact with you at some point, but give us a sense of what is happening. Are we all done with the signing and the agreement and bringing back those funds? Everything all done, Honorable Minister? Well, every other thing is uh, set and fully consummated in terms of uh, execution of the agreement, protest agreement uh, uh, among um, the interested parties comprising of um, Jez, uh, Island of Jersey, United States of America, and indeed the Federal Republic of Nigeria. An agreement has been signed and executed, and then we are looking forward towards the repatriation of money in a couple of weeks. So give us a sense of how fast this money can come. Uh, three weeks, a month or more. How early are you expecting this money to come? Uh, you see, the money as it is, is in the custody of uh, uh, Island of Jersey, who indeed, where the money was indeed deposited. And then uh, the United States of America came on board on account of the fact that it has an order of official uh, restraining the money against the background of the fact that its financial institutions and uh, uh, financial means of exchange, the dollar was used in the perpetration of the crime of looting the assets of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So that brings about the, the parties of interest to be uh, the island of Jersey, which is the money, United States of America, which initiated a judicial process for the restraining of the money, and Nigeria, which is indeed a big time. So uh, it, the common agreement agreed upon is within 27 days, the money will leave the custody of island of Jersey down to the United States of America, and within 45 days, the money will be repatriated uh, upon receipt of stem by United States of America will be repatriated to Nigeria. So we are looking at uh, around 72 or so days from yesterday when the agreement was eventually signed and executed by, by the, tri I mean, the tripartite agreement was signed by the party. Sounds like good news to the ears of a lot of Nigerians, especially when we know how much this money is and what impact it could make if it's judiciously used right here in Nigeria. This is perhaps the third tranche, if I'm not wrong, under the Buhari government in terms of a batch of loot that has been repatriated to Nigeria. Can you tell us, is this the last that we know of a batch of loot outside of Nigeria? Well, as it is, in the further negotiations in respect of additional money, not only relating to Abacha, but indeed extending to other parties of interest, inclusive of monies to be recovered uh, relating to Ibori, the former governor in Nigeria, inclusive of the money to be recovered relating to Alamesia, inclusive of additional money to be repatriated relating to uh, Dezani Addison Madoke, and indeed Kola Aluko. So, but negotiations in respect of additional monies we had indeed commenced yesterday, and we look forward to further to signing further agreement in no distant future for the purpose of repatriation of additional sum. Uh, uh, for the record, the amount to be repatriated as it relates to the agreement that was signed yesterday is over three hundred uh, million dollars, which translates to over one hundred billion Nigerian naira. So uh, we look forward to additional sum of money which is being recovered relating to these four parties I have enumerated, and that we have already commenced negotiations. Part of the money we are looking forward to have repatriated in a no distant future includes some of the money that are now uh, domiciled in UK and additional money in US and indeed in and indeed France. So we are indeed trying to cover this. There are additional money expected to be repatriated very soon as well. So, uh, uh, Honourable Minister, you've not told us in specific the question I asked about a batch of loot. Is that the last of it that we know that exists? I said it's not the last. Uh, the negotiations are ongoing in respect of additional monies relating to a batch 
but then we are not restricting the recovery, further recovery coming on board to Abacha. We are extending it to other parties of interest, inclusive of Alice of Madeke, uh, sorry, um, inclusive of Deziani, Ivory, Alamesia, and indeed Kola Aluko. So in respect of Abacha, it is not the last. We are still expecting additional money, but then we are expanding the negotiations process to cover other parties of interest. There are also fears that Nigeria may, have, uh, may be conceding too much to other parties involved in the repatriation process. Are we conceding too much, uh, AGF? Well, I don't understand what you mean by conceding too much. But the bottom line is we are recovering. And uh, as far as concession is concerned, we are as, uh, trying as much as possible to ensure that whatever belongs to Nigeria is indeed uh, recovered. So the idea of concession, when you talk of agreement, it is about uh, a, a kind of starting compromises and concessions. But we are not compromising to the extent of creating, uh, to the extent of um, uh, shortchanging Nigeria as far as negotiation process is concerned. So it is not a concession that will amount to effective shortchange of Nigeria, but a concession that will translate to getting money for Nigeria. Uh can you tell us how much is Nigeria spending on the legal process of getting these monies back? Well, um, Nigeria is not about spending. But you see, when recoveries are involved, you, you naturally have to concede certain things because as it is, Nigeria lawyer cannot come over to UK, cannot come over to the uh, island of Jersey, cannot come over to the United States of America to practice for the purpose of recovering certain proceedings because he is not licensed to uh, practice offshore. So in essence, you have to have a consortium of lawyers, both local and international, that naturally works together, and then that is on the basis of negotiations. And for your information, the traditional way of doing it before the government of President Muhammadu Buhari comes on board was conceding to around 30%, 35 to 40% uh, additional fee for the lawyers. But President Muhammadu Buhari has restricted uh, the, uh, the professional fee payment to nothing above 5%. So the issue I'm trying to put across is that as far as this government is concerned, no payment above 5% has been conceded over time. And there are times where we now negotiated below the 5% margin. As against the tradition where 20% where 20 25, 30, up to 40 percent had before now been considered as being professional fee for the lawyers engaged in recovery process. Before we allow you go, uh, Minister, Mr. Ottergaard, the spokesperson of the United States uh, Department, uh, the U.S. State Department, said that Nigeria will repay the Abacha loot if stolen again. Give us a sense of how this money is going to be used. This very because. Earlier, we said, based on the statement released from your office, that the monies are going to be used for three major projects. But in the past, we understand that $102 million, one of the tranches, was used uh, uh, in about 19 states for uh, the welfare scheme of the federal government. With the agreement you signed with the United States government to pay the money back if restalling, give us a clarity on that. Well, Nigeria as a government under the leadership of President Muhammadu Buhari has established a reputation, a tradition of reputation of applying the recovered sum, recovered and um, looted asset on the purpose for which it is agreed upon. Taking you back the history lane, perhaps you may very well recall that the $322 million recovered from Swiss was agreed by the parties to be applied to social investment programs. And that was the money that translated to end power process that translated to provision of school student programs, trade money, among others. So, and indeed, that was very much acknowledged by United States of America during the signing ceremony that they indeed have developed confidence in the, in the uh, leadership of President Muhammad Buhari as it relates to the fight against corruption. And uh, uh, there is no apprehension as far as accountability and transparency is concerned in dealing with the recovered loot as far as uh, President Muhammadu Buhari is concerned. So I think what indeed supported our, uh, the idea, what indeed supported the process 
of the recovery of the looted asset was the confidence that has been established in the international community as it relates to uh, the uh, the as it relates to the disbursement of the recovered loot uh, asset. Well, in the sense that it is indeed adequately been applied in line with the tradition, in line with the processes agreed upon, in line with transparency and accountability. So what well, I'm saying is, is we have established as a government a tradition of transparency and accountability, and that much has been acknowledged by the African Union, that much has been acknowledged by the United States of America, and indeed all interested party, parties, from which looted assets were over time ever since the coming on board of this government recovered. All right. We, we, we must allow you go, uh, AGF. Uh, but I, I hope that you have made uh, those, uh, the, uh, you, the transparency process you're talking about, did you make it public to Nigerian people? Is not, uh, is not, well, are Nigerians is aware of the, this document on how these monies were spent? Nigerians are aware that out of our desire to demonstrate transparency and accountability, we have indeed submitted over time, inclusive of the uh, looted asset recovered from, uh, from Switzerland, uh, we have uh, submitted to the participation of civil society organizations. We have established a tradition of accommodating the monitoring of the disbursement process by the World Bank over time. So we okay. have no refutational issues as far as the disbursement of looted assets is concerned as a government. Honorable Minister of uh, Justice and the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, talking to us from Washington, D.C., in the United States on the Abacha looted funds, hope to be repatriated back to Nigeria. Thank you so much for talking to us tonight on the program. So we'll take a break, and when we come back, my panel is ready tonight on the issue of national security. The IGP says community policing is the way to go with dissect that matter and the security of Nigeria. Genesis.